warm welcome to this week's video update. This is edition number nine now, and it's Tuesday the 24th of May. So I'm going to take you through the changes in the wholesale markets week to week, what's happened over last week and what to expect. Firstly, what we can see here are gas price movements over the last week, and we've seen prices come down across the board. So I don't think I've said that for a while now, but we've seen both short dated and longer dated contracts uh, come down. If we look at this in two ways, so in, in the more short term prices are down, but if we just look on the graph, you can see from around April onwards, prices have been holding very steady. Uh, and really they are finding quite a bit of a resistance point uh, at the levels they're at now. So there's two ways to look at this. Definitely day-to-day -day volatility, week-to-week -week volatility, but in a more medium term view, prices are holding very steady. And then almost identical picture for power. So this is the power changes week to week. Uh, so we can see again, we've seen price reductions across the board. But again, looking at that graph there, we can see a very strong resistance pattern forming perhaps even further back from mid-March until present. Prices have virtually been unchanged. So it'd be interesting to see if this trend continues, but we are seeing some positive direction in the week just gone. So what's led to those price changes over the last week? Well, we've had a few key events. I'm gonna talk you through them now. So firstly, we've seen the Asian market continue to trail European markets for LNG. So this has been the case all year. Euro European markets have traded above Asian markets for the most part. We are seeing that gap start to widen a bit, mainly due to softening demand in China. So China's demand and demand forecasts are reducing because of um, COVID restrictions and COVID policies over there is starting to have a more notable impact. This is helping, therefore, European security of supply with more LNG vessels heading towards Europe over Asia. And that has been a bearish factor on markets. Another bearish factor has been an update on the ruble payment situation. So last week, Russia did give a statement that half of its Gazprom clients have now opened up accounts with Gazprom Bank, who will facilitate the payments. And this has helped ease some supply risk concerns. Given half have agreed and half not, that does still mean around half the market have not agreed or have not set up payment facilities. So that's still uh, open to interpretation, but it was bearish on the markets. And then we had a couple, well, one more bullish factor actually. Um, so gas flows from Russia did reduce through the Belkin pipeline last week. This happened on a couple of consecutive days and it did start to put into question again, concerns of security of supply uh, for Europe still. And then lastly, we did have some very favorable conditions uh, weather-wise last week, which helped lower gas demand. So I had a combination of pleasant warm weather and strong wind generation at times. So this helped the demand for gas in the UK to come down. So whether that's gas for heating or gas for conversion into power, that was dragged down and did really help drag those near-term prices down in particular. If we look ahead to this week, there's a few things to look out for. So the big one is going to be a decision on the Russian oil band, which is expected this week. So there will be a likely an update and conclusion of the voting from the EU on the proposed Russian oil embargo band. But nothing has yet to be finalised, so it is creating some uncertainty on the outcome there. There are a couple of concerns over some countries such as Hungary voting against this. So it could really go either way and the market will be paying close attention to that. There should be further indicators of uh, clues towards an economic recession. So kind of talk of a recession is starting to grow, um, not just in the energy market, but in wider markets. Um, it's kind of helping or spurring this on was an update from the IMF, that a global recession could not be ruled out. And that has started to catch market attention really. If this was to occur, this would probably be bearish on the market and bring down prices, given recessions normally lead to declining energy consumption. We are expected to have an update on gas storage levels 
we get one regularly, but this week in particular could be important as there's been strong injections into uh, storage facilities over last week and expected to be into this week. So we could see a healthy jump in the supply picture of storage levels um, this week. And then we are expected to see some further developments between Finland and Russia. So if you're not aware, Finland are wanting to explore the possibility of joining NATO at least, uh, but Russia considers this to be uh, a direct threat really, uh, given that Finland borders Russia directly. So as a result, uh, Russia have acted quite promptly in suspending gas flows into Finland from Saturday. So last Saturday that occurred. Uh, and we could potentially see some further developments this week on that situation as tensions are beginning to grow there more. And that is it for a very quick uh, snapshot of what's happened over last week and what to expect this week. If you do want more daily content, we always have our website, which is available to access at all times. And we have the Market Watch Live team, which you can contact between 10 and 12, Monday to Friday. If you need any more further information, please feel free to contact me as well. Uh, my email address is scott at zenergy.co.uk. So thank you very much for watching and take care.